going to be? Oh, no hurry. I can wait. Hop in. Oh, thanks. Right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> well, I do hope he won't be long. Last time I saw him, he was playing hide-and-seek with a little Fenimore girl. Oh, bless him. Got you! Let me go! No, not until you've said it. Said what? That you like me much more than Vanessa Lockwood. Go on, admit it, and I'll let you give me a kiss. Ugh. I was right. He does love me. Your wedding anniversary when? Hmm. Day after tomorrow. Oh, don't tell George. It will spoil everything. What do you mean? Well, if he forgets our anniversary like he did last year, it means he won't be able to deny me anything. On the other hand, if he remembers, it'll mean a 10p card, a wild night out with a lamb and trumpet, all the crisps I can eat, and a lager and lie with a cherry in it. Out. Come on. Stupid oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That was close. What was? Never mind. Well, where would you like to go for your wedding anniversary, Mildred? Where I've just come from. Look in the glove compartment. Uh, the Hampton Wick Laundrette. No, love. The brochure. Oh. Oh. A long weekend at the London Hotel. Mm, special package deal. Oh, just think, Han. No cooking, no cleaning, just good food and good wines and a head waiter that looks like Paul Newman. Mm. But how much is all this going to cost? Oh, food and wine. Well, part of the package deal. Paul Newman? No idea. Still going to cost rather a lot. <laughs> I know. Poor George. He'd rather give blood than money. If he had any. Still, I must say, it does look very nice. Well, like it says in the brochure. The London Hotel caters for only the cream of international society. The cultured, the sophisticated, and those dedicated to the arts of gracious living. Yeah. Want me to order anything else, Uncle Harry? Uh, a liqueur? Brandy? After dinner mint? An exterminator. <clears throat> exterminator. What? Uh, not a warrior, Elvis. A whom? A highly qualified professional person uh, trained to seek out, destroy, and generally dispose of undesirable elements in our society. Undesirable elements? Uh, to which a certain business competitor of mine, who, uh, not to put too fine a point on it, is beginning to get right up my hootah. One uh, Bridges by name. Oh, you mean you want a hit man? No, Elvis, I do not mean I want a hit man. If I'd wanted a hit man, I would have used very... Uh, uh, Shylov. Very Shylov, yeah. I mean, his meat cleaver. Uh, no, Elvis, times have changed. The old tearaway days are dead and gone. I am now the head of a legitimate multinational business, which is why I need someone who will carry out his task, not only with skill, diligence and discretion, but in the event of his being apprehended, will keep his big yap shut, too. Can I do it? Uh, do what? Be the hitman. Oh, my God, not that again. Oh, go on, Uncle. Just once. I mean, how can I learn the business without a little practical experience? I have told you, times have changed. Besides, what if you were caught? What could I say to your mother? You wouldn't know where to start. I could learn? Well, pow! Do they teach assassination at the London Business School? Could you take a course in shooting, strangling, and what to do with the body? Oh, I know how keen you are, Elvis, but it's just not on. Well, it's still not right. I thought organised crime would be interesting, exciting, a bit of fun. Well, I mean, the way it's turning out, I might just as well be an accountant with a little townhouse in the suburbs where I wash the cars every week. Oh, dear. She's done it again. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Did naughty Mildred run you over with a lawnmower and knock your little head off? Never mind, Uncle George, you still make it better. Do you uh, normally talk to bits of concrete? It's not a bit of concrete. It's a genuine garden gnome with a personality of his own. He's dopey. It's not the only one. Yeah, well, there's no harm in it, is there? It's not often you get the chance of talking as much as you like without being contradicted. Oh. That reminds me. Has she said anything? Who about what? Your missus, about me. 
We don't discuss you. It encourages Tristan to pick up bad language. Only, um... Mildred's been behaving very strangely the last few days. Strangely? Yeah. Been nice, kind, considerate. What's strange about that? Well, I've done nothing to deserve it, have I? Just been behaving the way I usually do, you know. Mean, selfish, rotten? Yeah, that's... Well, no, I wouldn't put it quite as strong as that. So, um... Has Mildred been saying anything to your missus about it? I've already told you no. You have to ask her yourself. <laughs> oh! I don't know why I bother, don't you? I really don't. Oh! Thank you, love. <laughs> George. Have a nice day. Hello, Mr. Former. Um, see you later, Anne. Mm. Come on. Hello, darling. Good grief. You didn't accept a lift in that, did you? I've warned you before. It's a death trap. Shall we talk about it inside, Geoffrey? I don't know, Dopey. What can I say? I think we should have a little chat. Yeah, so do I. Hey! I thought for a moment, it, a chat, what about? My financial situation. I need some money, urgently. Oh, yeah, what for? To get away from here. I'm having woman trouble. You are? Women, girls, they won't leave me alone. And I'm fed up with it. I mean, who needs them? I'd rather have a pet frog. I know how you feel. So I was hoping you could let me have 50 pence. Towards my bus fare. I've got to go somewhere I can be alone. Think things out. Where did you have in mind? As far as possible. France, Madagascar, the South Pacific, Marty Vera's in East Croydon. No, look, I'm sorry, son. If I had 50 pence, I'd come with you. Now, you hop off. I've got work to do. Suit yourself. But I would have thought it was worth a lot more than a measly 50 pence. What? You do know something, don't you? All right. What is it? Tomorrow's Thursday. I know that. Thursday the 12th. I know that as well. What else do you know? Well, not much, but it's not as though it's Mildred's birthday or anything, is it? So th that's all you know for 50 pence. I want it back. Oh, my God, it's our wedding anniversary. She'll kill me. That's right. Thanks for the 50 pence, Mr. Roper. And Mr. Roper? Yeah? Happy anniversary. Thanks for the use of the phone. You won't say anything to Mildred, will you? Thanks for the surprise, of course not. It's just nice to know you remembered, after all. Remembered? Of course I remembered. How could I possibly forget a thing like that? Can I help you? Oh, uh, hello. Uh, director inquiries. Yeah, um, I I'm trying to find the number of the Candlelight Restaurant. Uh, it's uh, just outside Weybridge. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's right. I was sure you'd forgotten, George. What? Wedding anniversary? <laughs> the greatest day in my life. All right, don't rub it in. I'm sorry for all those nasty things I said to you this morning before you told me what you'd arranged. I get it. Thank you, George. Not at all. Anyone can make a mistake. Not to mention being mean, spiteful and extremely unpleasant. A George? Yes, my love. Oh, nothing. I mean, after all, this is supposed to be a very special occasion. It certainly is. Mm. I think it's a next on the left. Oh. Whatever made you think of it? It? Yes, I mean, taking me back to the very same restaurant where you proposed to me all those years ago. Oh. And it suddenly came to me yesterday, uh, the, the last month. What I said would give Mildred the greatest pleasure on our wedding anniversary, I said. A solid gold locket, I said. Well, uh... Since uh, you mentioned it, Of course it, not, I said. Be too obvious, I said. It would? Yeah, she could have one of those anytime she wants, I said. I can? Anytime I have the wherewithal to buy one, I said. Ah. Well, be some time before I could afford the sort of gold locket my wife wants and deserves, I said. Surprise, surprise. So, it suddenly came to me. Why don't we take a trip down memory lane, I said. You know, recapture the romance of yesteryear, I said. It would not only be a lot of fun. And it wouldn't cost much money. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but no, 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 that's wrong. It, ah, I think we're arriving. Oh. We seem to be the only ones here. Well, it's a bit early for most people yet. Yeah, I wonder if Luigi will remember us. 
Why should he? I don't remember him. Well, you know, the head waiter, the big bloke with the bad feet. Oh, George, that was a long time ago. He's probably gone to the Great Savoy Grill in the sky. Anyway, who cares? As long as the food's all right. I am starved. Yeah, all right, we'll eat straight away. I booked our original table, the one by the orchestra. Oh, George, you've thought of everything. Right, shall we go in? Yeah. Nearly everything. George! Yeah? Oh. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, George. George? Yeah? It really was a nice idea of yours. Romantic, too. It seems I've, um, underestimated you. Yeah, well, that's your trouble, Mildred. You've always underestimated me. Shall we go in? Yeah. I think it's very romantic. What? Mr. Roper taking Mildred back to the restaurant where they got engaged. Yeah, well, he always was a bit of a masochist. Who would have thought that Mr. Roper would have come up with an idea like that? Mildred was convinced he wouldn't even remember the date. Well, it was a first time for everything, even a glimmer of intelligence in a man like that. I still think it's romantic. <laughs> Old memory lane, he says. Let's try and recapture some of the romance of yesteryear. There seems to be some slight change in management. Well, what do we do now? Just have to go somewhere else. Come on. Right. Oi! You talking to me? You the geezer that put the special table. Uh, oh, yeah, but as you see, there's been some slight misunderstanding. Uh, not as far as I'm concerned, mate. You booked it. You got it. Best table in the house, right next to the orchestra. Oh, yeah, but uh, there's been some slight mistake, you see. We, we had no idea the place had changed hands. Yeah, well, that's your lucky act, Tosh. I mean, I've already had to turn down half a dozen customers on account of your booking, so sit down. Yeah, listen, you don't expect hey, me to... Hey, hey, George, just do what he says. Now we're here, we might as well have a snack. I'm starving. Yeah, me too. All right. <laughs> what do you got? Well, you name it. Egg and chips, fish and chips, pie and chips, chump chop and chips, or mixed grill. Mixed grill? Egg, fish, pie... Chump chop and chips, right? Right. I'll just have a coffee. Yeah, me too. With or without? Without. I mean, without. With, please. Well, a fine wedding anniversary this is turning out to be. Well, how was I to know they changed the place into a pull in for yobbos? You should have checked up. How could I? There wasn't time. Tristan only reminded me yesterday. Oh, okay. So you had forgotten. I knew it. And to think I actually apologised for what I said to you this morning. I did not forget. It just temporarily slipped my mind. How could you? I mean, obviously, our wedding anniversary means nothing to you anymore. Of course it does. Of course it does. And what's more, I'll prove it to you. How? I've seen if they got our tune. What, on that thing? Yeah. Well, they might have a punk version by the Sox Pistols. The who? Yeah, or even them. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, um, I'm sorry, they haven't got it. They haven't got what, George? Our tune. What's the title? Uh, oh, it's, um, uh, well, uh... You've forgotten it, haven't you, George? Uh, Has this bird been bothering you, girl? You what? Your belt up. I've been watching him. He's really got you going, hasn't he? It's just a I said shut up. I hate to see a lovely little dolly like you being pushed around by a sawn-off little git like him. You just say the word and I'll give him a smacking. All right? Mildred, tell him who I am. Who you are? I've just told you who you are. You're a sawn-off little git. That's who you are. But you're a lovely little dolly who's just got to say the word and pow, I'll give it him. Right in a ribcage, pow, just like that. All right? Uh, no, no, I don't need any help. Thank you. 
Nice little dolly. She's old enough to be your... Er, uh, George, I'll let you know if I reconsider, Mr... Uh... Call me Jacko. Mr Jacko. But, uh, I am his wife. You wouldn't sooner be his widow instead? No, she would not. Oh, well, just as you like, girl. Don't you forget, Spider. All right. <laughs> All right. You enjoyed that, didn't you? You reveled in it. Well, it's a long time since anyone's called me a dolly. Lucky for him, he ran away when he did. I'd have thrashed him with an inch of his life. You thrash him? <laughs> Don't be silly. Yeah, I know he saw all talk. He didn't really want to punch up. Not with someone like me. Oh, a quick look too. In the solar plexus, he'd have been out like a light. I wouldn't bet on it. I know he saw all wind and water. I wouldn't mind betting he's got his muscles sewn in his jacket. Well, now's a chance to find out. Eh? He's coming back. Oh, God. One with. And one without. Special personal service on account of this lovely little dolly here. <laughs> oh. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Jacko. She's not a bad little dolly, is she? Oh, bravo. Here, why don't you sling him out and take me out instead? Just a minute. I told you to shut up. Right, that's it. Outside. You what? George, don't be so silly. You, you heard what I said. Outside. Suit yourself. Here. Oh, mothballs has only caught me out. <laughs> <laughs> now, I can only be pushed so far, Mildred, and this is it. But George, no, you can't... don't to... try and stop me. A man must do what a man must do. Christian duty to duff him up now. Yep. <laughs> Besides, I've got my reputation to consider. No, no, listen, Jacko, no, 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 I'm warning you. If I lose my temper, you'll regret it, you know. No, listen, no, Jacko, I'll tell you. Can I help you? Oh, uh, good evening. Um, I'd like to book one of your 
Get away from it all. No expenses spared. Long weekend packages. Oh, well, no. And I didn't realize that the VAT and service charges were extra. Oh, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, as my husband always says. <laughs> uh, well, this weekend, if possible. Oh, uh, yes, I will. She's checking. Mildred. Yes, George. May I say something? Like what? Where you'd like to be buried? Because either you pay for this long weekend, or you'll be paying for the rest of your life. So what's it to be? Uh, yes? Oh. Well, yes, I know it's short notice, but I was hoping that... Oh, they're full up, are they? Oh, oh dear. Oh, you can give us what? Two single rooms. Oh, it could have been worse. Oh, with connecting doors, we'll take them. Oh, George, you're so good to me. Uh, uh, Roper. Mrs. and Mr. Roper. Thank you, Mrs. Roper. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow evening. Around seven? Yes. Bye. Captain Rack Neal of British Airways. Please call at reception. Hold the lift, please. Hold the lift. Please call at reception, please. Didn't quite make it. <laughs> Mr. Pinto, sir. Telephone. Right, uh, you're going up. Very pinned to you. Oh, hello, Gordon. You here? Good. What's his name? Tell him to come tomorrow evening. Shall we say uh, seven o'clock sharp? The hotel car park. Uh, what will he be driving? I see. No, no. I'll have uh, I'll have someone meet him. Yeah, I'm sure he is good. If you recommend him. Yeah. Cheerio. Do hurry up, George. They'll be here any minute. Who? The bailiffs? If you mention the cost of this weekend just once more... Well, Mildred, I... suppose I can't meet the bill. Well, listen, I'm a traffic warden, you know, not Aristotle and Assis. Oh, I'm sure you'll find the money somehow, George. I mean, if the worst comes to the worst, you can always sell something. Like what? Well, use your old motorbike, your grubby magazine collection, your... Uh... Body, if you have to. But don't be disgusting. I meant to medical science. Oh. Oh, you don't think I meant? God, that would even pay for morning tea. But what about truffles? Who's going to look after her? You didn't think of that, did you? Yes, you did. Yeah, it's the four miles. Isn't it nice of them? Yeah, bloody marvellous. Do we have to take him? You know what sort of dog he is. A Yorkshire Terrier. A very leaky Yorkshire Terrier. Couldn't Mrs. Roper take him with them? Her. She's a bitch. I thought you liked her. Truffles! They can't take her on a second honeymoon. That animal is a sprinkler system on legs. Daddy? Hmm? You know that old basket? Mr. Roper? The one under the stairs. I've made up a bed for truffles. My fishing creel? And I've lined it with a sort of woolly thing from the linen cupboard. Woolly thing? Knit yourself a glamorous evening gown, Nimble Fingers, part 23. I've always wanted a dog. I can throw things as she can pick them up. Oh, you don't need a dog to do that. I've been doing that for years. Come on, let's go and collect her. Do we have to? I mean, couldn't she pop them through the letterbox or something? I've told you, Mildred had invited us in for a drink before they go. Whoopee. George, where's Truffles? I suppose you realise we're going to miss Wonder Woman. I bet she's under that table. Oh, Wonder Woman? Truffles. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> I like it the way she's spinning round and round and round. No one knows she's dying a prince because she isn't wearing her glasses. Oh, that'll be the four miles. Let him in, George, will you? And the way she catches bullets on her watch it. Ching, ching. Uh, George. All right, all right, I'm going. But she can lasso me any time. Now, you behave yourself. No little puddles on the four miles carpets. Right. Right, come in, come in. Hello, Mildred. Hello, loves. Oh, it's ever so nice for you to dog sit at such short notice. Uh, would you like to sit down? Oh, thanks. There we go. There you are. Uh, uh, George. Yeah? Get them some drinks. Oh, yeah. What do you want? Oh, anything, really. What have you got? I've got a lot. Light, brown, mild, bitter. I might even have some lager. Uh, I, I think we'd prefer something stronger. Hmm. Well, I may have some sherry. Uh, would that be the Moroccan sherry you gave us last time? 
No. This one comes from Hong Kong. No, thank you. Uh, I think I'll have a scotch. Um, gin and tonic for me, please. And my usual. Scotch, gin. I shall have to take out a second mortgage. So you're uh, going to the uh, London Hotel? Oh, do you know it? Oh, yes. I've dined there several times. They have one of the best chefs in Europe. His canard Louis V avec orange is superb. Yeah, especially with a dollar for daddy sauce. Right, uh, gin and tonic, scotch. Uh, which is which? Uh, Oh, oh. Uh, that's the gin. Yeah, oh, and that's the tonic. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the scotch. If you want anything in it, yeah, I'll have a drop of scotch. Well, I asked my usual, and I got it. Oh, so. You have been a bit mean with the drinks, George. Have I? Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll make up for it the next round. Cheers. 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 Oh, my word, look at the time. I better put the bags in the car. Uh, George. What? The drinks. Ah, oh, no, better not, Mildred. After all, I am driving. <laughs> Turning on the writer. Thanks a lot. He'll uh, meet you at the Hurrier car park at seven o'clock sharp. Uh, hold on. At seven o'clock sharp. How will I know him? Uh, he'll be driving a lavender. Daimler Jaguar and identify himself as uh, Morris from over the river. Morris from over the river. Driving a lavender Daimler Jaguar. Oh, uh, license number GFA411N. GFA411N. Got it. Yes, well, uh, that shouldn't be too difficult even for you, eh, Elvis. You leave it to me, Uncle. I'll find him. Yeah, well, you better get a move on. It's nearly seven o'clock now. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm going. And please, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Good evening, madame. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. <laughs> well, you, move along. I'll phone if we need a minicab. Minicab? Do you mind? I happen to be madame's husband. And these are bags. You're staying here? Yeah. Long weekend package deal. Oh, one of them. Oi, Corporal, where's the car park? First turning on the right. All oh, right. See you inside, Mildred. Thank you. God. Lavender Daimler Jaguar. Check. 
Yeah, excuse me. Yes? Morris, isn't it? Uh, well, yes, it is, actually, but why? Now, hold on. GFA 411N. Got it. And uh, you, I take it off from over the river? Uh, well, from Hampton Wick, actually, but well, would you mind... Elvis. Me? Elvis Lever, the Petroni's numera owner. You are? I'm the big man's welcoming committee. Oh, what, you mean the boss of this, um... Yeah, and he yeah. sent me down to meet you. Come on, we're late. Well, this is very decent of him. Does he, uh, welcome everyone like this? Mm. Only the top men in their chosen professions. And you are one of the best in yours, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I like to think I am. How did you, uh, find out? Oh, well, we checked up on you, obviously. You got all this trouble just for a single package deal? Well, it may be a single package deal to you, Morris. Uh, George. What? George. George Roper. Ah! Right, got it. George it is. And why not? It's as good a name as any. Right. Know something, George? <laughs> Your job fascinates me. Always has done. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun? Yeah. I'm known as the Hampton Horror. When people see me walking down the high street, the blood drains from their faces. <laughs> I bet it does, George. I bet it does. Would you mind me asking, how you got into this line of work in the first place? Oh, not at all. I just went down to the labour and signed on. Oh, went down to the labour and signed on. <laughs> I like it, George. I like it. Uh, the red case goes in here and the other one next door. My husband's room. Oh, in that case, madam, shall I unlock the connecting door? Oh, well, why not? I mean, after all, it's uh, supposed to be a second honeymoon. <laughs> on the other hand, what's the point? I'll only put a chair under the handle. No, don't bother. Right. Oh, and here's, um, here's something for your trouble. Oh, no trouble at all, madam. No trouble. And I see you realise that. Uh, if you do happen to see my husband anywhere, uh, would you ask him to get a move on? Otherwise, we're going to be late for dinner. How will I recognise him? Oh, you can't miss him. He's a uh, bit on the short side, blue suit, ginger moustache, and the sort of manner that goes with his uniform. Ah, he's a military gentleman, is he? No, he's, a um, he's a traffic warden. I uh, appreciate your reluctance to talk about your work, but just as a matter of interest, what's your record for one day? Oh, uh... Oh, yeah, uh, about 22. 22? Yeah. That's not possible. Uh, well, I admit I had to be pretty nippy on my feet, but I got them all in the end, every one of them. Every one of them? Yeah. Caught up with one at the traffic lights. Traffic lights? In yeah. broad daylight? Yeah. He, he just sat there petrified, didn't know what hit him. Didn't know what hit him? My God. Come! This is Morris, Uncle Harry. Oh, uh, Martin, too. Now, he's the first to be called George at the moment. Right, George? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, well, that's your privilege, George. I'm Harry. That's the villa of... Uh, Shailoff. Villa Shailoff over there. This is Marlene, a budding actress, model, and my little uh, protégé. Oh, uh, uh, sit. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, it's a nice place you've got here. Uh, yes, well, if we can afford the best, obey the best, I always say. <laughs> and that's why you're here, George. Uh, you come highly recommended, George. Oh, do I? Yes, my contact tells me there's no one quite like you south of the river. Oh, well, that's, that's very nice of him. <laughs> and he's right, Uncle. Do you know what George told me on the way up? <laughs> My God! <laughs> I can see you and me is going to get on very well together. A drink? Uh, yes, but only in moderation. Uncle wants to know what you'd like to drink. Uh, scotch, champagne, brandy, liqueur, you name it. Oh, uh, a brown ale, please. Brown ale? You sure? If George wants a brown ale, bring George a brown ale. Yes, Uncle. Uh, I admire a man with simple tastes, envy him even. For those of us who are blessed, or should I say cursed, with a profound appreciation of the arts, uh, some of us are really ripped off by some of these Ponzi art dealers. Which is why I decided to have a go myself. Who knows? I might end up another Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> Care to take a look? I... Oh, oh, yes, right. Oh. Well, what do you think? Uh, they're very nice. <laughs> What do you mean, 
haven't seen him. Well, he only went to park the car. But could you could you put out another call for him, please? Yes, tell him I'll be in the bar. Thank you. God, I bet he's still down there. Booking every car in sight. Oh! Oh, oh I do beg your pardon. Oh, for what, madame? No harm done. Oh, very kind of you. Not at all. Uh, uh, oh, um, uh, do you think you could uh, direct me to the nearest lift, please? I'm, I'm a little lost. Uh, allow me to escort you. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Uh, uh, do you come here often? Every time I come over on business. Uh, from Barcelona. Barcelona? Oh, Italy! Uh, Spain, actually. Oh, that Barcelona. <laughs> <laughs> So you're Spanish, then? Oh, you are very perceptive, madame, yes. Oh. Just a lonely Spanish businessman a long way from home. And you, you are on your own? Uh, to all intents and purposes, yes. Oh, then perhaps you will allow me to buy you a drink? Oh, I'm afraid not, no. No, I'm, I'm supposed to be meeting somebody in the bar. Oh, even so, you can't at least have one little drink while you're waiting. Why not? C'est la guerre, as you Spanish say. <laughs> uh, look, I, I really should be getting off. What's your hurry, George? I can't wait to get started. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it's the wife, you see. She'll kill me. <laughs> Did you hear that, man? Um, uh, Shailoff. Uh, Shailoff. Uh, his wife will kill him. <laughs> no, no, don't. Well, I'll tell you, H.P., this pose ain't half killing me. Can't have a rest. Of course. No, I really ought to be off. Yeah, but you haven't done your beer yet. Elvis, what are you doing out there? Brewing the stuff. Sorry, Uncle. I can't find any. No-one's ever asked for brown ale before. I'll have to send down for some. Oh, don't bother. George wants to get going. Uh, if you don't mind. No, not at all, George. I appreciate your enthusiasm. It's people like you who make this world a better place to live in. Oh, that's nice of you to say so. <laughs> the envelope. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, all there, George. Photo, uh, name, address, the lot. Whose photo? Not, uh, not now, George. You know what I mean. Uh, just uh, pop it in your pocket and look at it later. No, I don't quite... Uh, don't worry, George. You'll find, um, everything has been taken care of. Well, if you'll forgive me, all this painting has made me feel so artistically uh, <laughs> drained. I think I'll have a little lie down. Uh, well, goodbye, George. Good hunting. Uh, you too. <laughs> Come, Marlene. Time for another coaching session. What costume should I wear? The gym slip or the naughty nurse? Oh, uh, I forgot. You'll get off your fee in the usual way. Downstairs, OK? Downstairs? Shake, rattle and roll. Comprende? Good luck, George. Yep. Oh. Oh, thank you. Salud. Oh, cheers. <laughs> this is uh, very kind of you, Mr. Uh... Uh, Sancho. Oh. Don Sancho Rodriguez de Diaz de Barcelona. And you? Oh, I'm Mildred. Mildred Dorothy Roper, Knee Tremble, E. Hampton Wick. Senora Roper, as he. You are married, yes? Um, I have a husband, yes. Uh, but don't, don't let's please talk about me. I mean, I'm sure you've got enough troubles of your own. <laughs> I would adore to talk about you, Mildred. But not here. We need to be alone. Let us talk over dinner in the privacy of my room, yes? Oh, well, that's very thoughtful of you, Sancho, but uh, I couldn't. I never have, you see. You never have what? Uh, dined alone. Uh, with a man. That wasn't my husband, I mean. Oh. How many husbands have you had? Uh, only the one. But it was a very kind invitation. It was, it was very nice of you. In Spain, we have a saying. It is easy to be nice to a beautiful lady. Oh. How utterly charming. You never get my husband to say anything like that. Well, surely... No, really. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Must be because you've got a kind face. <laughs> Not to mention the gin in it. 
No, the fact is that the last time I went out with George, you know, we dined together. The only romantic thing he said to me was, well, Mildred, this is better than a slap in the face with a wet fish. <laughs> How poetic. <laughs> Look, uh, are you sure you won't change your mind? If we order now, dinner can be sent straight to my room. You see, the truth is that I've, I've wanted to talk to somebody like this for years. I mean, really talk, you know what I mean? Well, yes, but like I say, if we do not move... You see, the thing is, my husband doesn't understand me. Yeah. Very nice. Ah, I'm probably poked too. <laughs> the operator. Uh, yeah, oh, um, this is uh, room 632. Uh, I, I want to know if anybody's seen my wife. Um, well, uh, my name's Roper, George Roper. Description? Um, oh, about uh, five foot nine, gingery moustache. Uh, oh, her, yeah. Um, look, could you just ask the receptionist if, if my wife's left a message? Oh, uh, tell Oh, hello. Oh, which bar's that? Oh, yeah, right. Thank you, Tom. Oh, I don't know. Trust Mildred. I'd better get down there before she drinks the place dry. Well, I don't want to be disloyal to George. He's, he's got many hidden qualities. Well, he hides them from me, anyway. I mean, he even spoiled our wedding day. I mean, the most beautiful moment of the ceremony. And he slips a rolled-up pawn ticket on my finger. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I really should be... Uh... And the honeymoon? Two solid weeks of monopoly. The only thrill of the fortnight was when he landed on me waterworks. Signora, I really must... Everybody said that a wartime marriage couldn't last. Well, I was dead. Where did we go wrong? Waiter, feel her up. I, I'm so sorry. I, I just remember I have to see a man about a chihuahua. Adios, senor. And what would madam like now? A husband. Sorry, I can't help. <laughs> You're a handsome looking devil, George Roper. How lucky could a woman get? Oh, uh, excuse me, um, I'm looking for a woman. No accounting for taste? No, no, uh, my wife told me to meet her down here. Oh, I see. Well, if she's the one I think she is, she said, would I tell you that she's gone to spend a pound? Uh, don't, don't you mean spend a penny? Not in that place, dear. I, that's a casino, where they gamble for money. Well, what do you think they did in there? Play snakes and ladders for smarties? <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you. Red, 23. Oh, thump. meeny, miny, mo. Okay, roll them. <laughs> Here's your bets, please. Okay. What the devil do you think you're doing? 
Do you know how long I've been waiting for you? Oh, yeah, well, I can explain that. No more bets, thank you. Black 35. Oh, no. Oh, well, fifth time lucky. George, oh. pick a number. Oh, um, five. Right. Five it is. How much do these things cost, Milky? It's only a pound. A pound? What, you mean tenpence ago? Oh, of course not. A pound ago. Place your bets, please. A pound ago? Are you potting here? Get your money back. I will not. I have come here to enjoy myself, and you are not going to spoil it by your meanness. Any more bets, thank you? How can anyone enjoy themselves losing every penny they got? And you can't win. It's fixed in the management's favour. Five, really? Oh, there you are, see? Number five. Number five? We won at 35 to 1. 35 to 1? That, that's, that, that's, that's 35 quid. Yes. Now, we're going to uh, call it quits while we are ahead. Oh, no. Hold on, Mildred. What's the hurry? Oh, Uncle? Uh, uh, Uncle, it's George's coat. Uh... Yeah, what is it? Where's, uh, Vera... Shylock is downstairs arranging George's first payment. Uh, this coat, George left it behind. I'd better take it to him. What, now, downstairs in front of everyone so they know you're acquainted? Oh, uh, Just well... Just go and bung it in his car and make sure it's the right car. Right. Oh, come on, Uncle. I got the right car last time, didn't I? George, now that's enough. What do you mean that's enough? I've only just started. It's a gift, Mildred. I just can't lose. Oh my God! Well, come on, hurry up. I haven't got all night. Place your beds, please. The wrong one. What do you mean he's the wrong one? Because the real one's in the back of his jag, as dead as a dingo's doodle. Sorry, boss. It. Uh... It seems I, uh, I got the wrong one. The wrong one? What are you talking about, you idiot? The wrong one. Well, he must have been a decoy, Mr. Bridges. It's just a sort of dirty, rotten trick Harry Pinto would pull. No, the real one's in the casino, collecting his first instalment. Oh, come on. We all make mistakes. No, of course I won't. Not a second time. You better not, Harvey. You know what'll happen to you if you do. Puff. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Ciao, Uncle. Thirteen, Black. Thank you. Thank you very much. George, I just can't stand this anymore. Don't trust me, Mildred. I know what I'm doing. Uh, leave it there, please. Place your bets, please. He's a what? A traffic warden, Uncle, from Hampton Wick. A traffic warden, are you sure? Well, that's what his wife told him in reception. <laughs> He's here with his wife? They booked in for the weekend. Uh, wedding anniversary celebration. Ah, that's nice. You've really excelled yourself this time, Elvis. I sent you out for an exterminator. And you come back with a traffic warden! Uh, I'm sorry, Uncle. I won't do it again. How could you be so stupid? I knew there was something wrong with that little toe rag the moment he walked through that door. You said you liked his style. So I ask you. A real professional. That's what you called him. I won't tell you again. Uh, at least we found out in time. Toe rag. Black, 15. Sorry, sir. Trust me, Mildred, he said. I know what I'm doing, Mildred, he said. Do you realise how much money you've just lost? Yeah, well, that's the way it goes in roulette, Mildred. It's what they call a temporary setback. I'll win it back again. All I need is a bit of capital. How much money you've got? Oh, no, you don't. Mildred, I'm on a winning streak. I only need a few quid. Not my few quid. 
I left my wallet upstairs. Right. And let's go and get your wallet. Oh, no, little bit. George! Oh. You do realise we're too late for dinner. Uh, 63062, please. That's all right. We can send out for a bag of chips. A bag of chips? We are in the London Hotel and not in the local Doss House. Oh, oh, yeah, of oh. course. In that case, we send out for two rock salmon then and a bag of chips. We will go out somewhere. Let's go and get our coats. Oh, Mildred. Oh. I was just wondering if you uh, could think of anyone else. Uh, same deal and conditions, plus a productivity bonus if he has to take out a bodyguard as well. Okay, eh? We'll do what you can. You'll get him up yes, we'll brief him here. Uh, photograph, name, address. Oh, my God, I'll phone you back. Elvis, where is the envelope? Envelope? The envelope we gave to Morris, the one with the photo, the name, the address and all the gear. Morris? Oh, you mean George, George Roper. What does it matter what he's called? We've got to get it back, because if they put two and two together and go to the police... You're right. Get that envelope back. Find out exactly what they know. If they haven't rumbled us, no problem. Uh, but if they have... Then kill them. Hurry up, George. George, come on, get a move on. I can't find it. What, you want it? No, my overcoat. Oh, don't be so silly. I'll look for it. It's no use. I must have left it somewhere. Oh, no, I remember. <laughs> hotel, sent someone down to meet you in the car park, right? Took you out to the penthouse, and that's where you left your overcoat. Yeah. Why should he do that? Well, simply to make me feel very welcome and show me his little project, eh? Pardon? Granted. Yeah. He's very nice. He's lying on a sort of sofa, holding up the mirror. Now, you listen, George. I don't know what you're trying to hide, but if you don't stop this nonsense and tell me where you really left that coat... No, all I'm... right, all right. If you don't believe me, why don't you go up there right now and ask him yourself? Oh, so you can sneak back to the casino? Not likely. Anyway, Milda, I can't go out without me overcoat. I'll catch me dead. <laughs> Promise? Promise. <laughs> catch a coat, you'd be about as much fun as a wet weekend in High Wickham. Right, let's go back and get your muffler. I wish you'd make up your mind. <laughs> Quick, George, is going up. I seem to have lost my appetite. Do you think I could be sickening for something? Sickening, yes. For something, no. <gasps> Look, go and get your muffler, George. Uh, I'll wait here. Mildred, it's been a very long day. I mean, couldn't we just have an early night? Well, just you and me. Alone. Together. Well, who else? I'll go and get me muffler.
me to get you a doctor? No, really. He'd only tell me what I already know. And what's that? I shouldn't be here at all. Well, where should you be, then? In a hospital. On a shelf. In a bottle. Never? Oh, yes. I've got things wrong with me that I haven't even got names for. Oh, good heavens. <sighs> of course, I know what's causing it. Stress! Stress? The constant worry. The anxiety about the wife. The kids. School fees. Oh, I know just what you mean. You've got kids as well, have you? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. My uh, husband and I just didn't get round to it. <laughs> All right. Uh, muffler, muffler. Hello, George. Oh, hello. <laughs> what are you doing here? I just came to return your coat. Oh. Uh, that's, uh, that's very kind of you. I won't need me muffler now. How did you manage to get in here? Oh, I suppose Mr Pinto has a pass key, has he? Come here, George. What? I've got something for you. With Mr Pinto's compliments. Oh, yeah? What's that? Me. You? In exchange for that envelope. Which envelope? The one he gave you. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, that one. Of course. I told him. What sort of a girl do you think I am, I said. Then I thought... Why not, I thought. It will make a nice change. And I've always liked little men. Well, when I say little, <laughs> I don't mean... Anyway, fair dues. Right, then. What are you doing? I'm looking for it. Looking for what? That envelope. Yeah, oh, why didn't you say so? Well, come on, let's have it. Right, I'll... Be... Oh. Oh, I don't know where it is. Now, look. Yeah, well, well, no, hang on. I remember putting it in my pocket. Well, let's look for it. Come on, take your clothes off. <laughs> no, just don't. Just don't. My wife's outside if she finds us like this. Well, <laughs> give me the envelope. No, I tell you, I haven't got it. All right, George. If that's the way you want it, let's see what you're made of. Oh, no, 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 honey, don't get off. It's no use, George. I'm stronger than you. So you might as well lay back and enjoy it. No, no, no. And this is little Bonnie in her brownie uniform. Oh, how sweet. And this is Clyde. Mm? I'm hoping he's going to follow me in the family business. Oh, what's that? Removals. Oh. Well, it's been ever so nice talking to you. Now, are you sure you're all right? Yes, I'm fine. But duty calls, as they say. Yeah. Oh, uh, you mean the removal job? Exactly. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better find out what's happened to my husband. Well, it's been ever so nice meeting you. Likewise. Good night, and uh, thank you once again. Oh, good night, Mr. Uh... Oh, what a charming man. Oh, he's so gentle, he's so kind. So where's George? a lady, with all my love. George. From your devoted admirer, Antoine. Who the hell's Antoine? It is I. And who are you? Oh, please, forgive me, madame. 
But when I saw you earlier this evening across a crowded casino, I said to myself, Sacre bleu, I said, that is for me. Oh, did you? Oh, please, do not be frightened. I know I did wrong, but I just couldn't help myself. Well, I'm not frightened, Antoine, it, but it's uh, very flattering, I suppose. Then you will not send me away? Oh, sorry, yes, I'm afraid I must. I mean, you may find this very difficult to believe, but I am a married woman. Sorry, Antoine. Very well. If you insist, I will go. But please, not before one petite glass of champagne. Oh! Oh, no. No, oh, I really... Oh, please, Cherie. Oh. All right, then, well, but just the one. I mean, you wouldn't want me to get into trouble with my husband, would you? You know, he's so, uh, he's so big, he's so strong, he's so, uh... Jealous. Who, Morris? Morris? His name's George. Uh, we, uh, of course. <laughs> oh, lovely. Do you need any help? Uh, no, no, I, I can manage. It is always a little difficult with a good vintage champagne. But once you have the neck... Ah! Oh, 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 where are the dressing? Oh, you're all wet. Parbleu, oh, oh, oh. non, non. Oh, I think you'd better take them off. Uh, uh, no, madame. Merci. Uh, it, but if it's all the same to vous... Oh, nonsense. You don't want to get rheumatism, do you? Especially there. Look, go on. Go into the bathroom, get changed into this. I'll dry your pants on the radiator. Uh, no, I, I'm fine, really. You do not have to be shy with me. Oh, all right then. But if you promise not to peek. No, I've already told you I'm a married woman. Silly boy. What are you doing? Then tell me where you're hiding the envelope. I'm not hiding them in there. You must be. I've been through everything else. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on now. Oh. Hurry up, Antoine. Your champagne's getting flat. I'm doing my best. Damn. Last little Fleming thing. Ow. Oh. Oh. Ow. Oh. What is it? It's my zip. It's got stuck. Now I've got my shirt jammed in it. Oh, dear. I, I can't get it out. Well, uh, is there anything I can do? Bless the flaming thing. Oh, you poor boy. Look, uh, come over here. Uh, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, now, you just lie down there. That's it, on the bed. That's it. Now, don't you worry. We'll soon get it free. Seems such a nice woman as well. Oh. God Almighty! They're both at it. What kind of a marriage is that? Stop wriggling about, George. I'm going to get this bastard. Help! You like it? Oh no! Oh no! Don't stop! Come here, George. <laughs> Oh, 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 you win. Have your way with me if you must. But you'll hate yourself in the morning. Too late. I'm knackered. I haven't felt like this since I made that film for Harry Pinto. Oh, what film is that? Gold is Green Gang Bang. Did you see it? Oh, no, no. But I will do. I know they had to get it right. But I mean... 29 retakes in one day. Still, as Mr. Pinto said, it took a real professional to handle that role. I'm going to powder me what's it. Let a bit of air in George. It's like a blinking sauna in here. Oh. 
Right. Anything. Like what? Like... Ah! Not me. Ah. Oh. I could have sworn I had... Uh... Time of night? Ah, bathroom. Yeah, well, uh, we're running a bit late. Sorry to disturb you. Window cleaner. More likely a peeping Tom. Damn pervert! What the hell's all the noise about, Percy? Coast is clear. It's all right. Look, um, if you do happen to bump into my husband, I hope he won't mention anything that happened tonight. No, it's just that I wouldn't want him to get the wrong idea. Why should he do that? All you did was to take off my trousers. I... <laughs> Sorry. Look, Antoine, I'm, I'm still not quite sure why you did it, but thank you ever so much for the champagne and the flowers. Well, you are a nice boy. Right. Off you go now. Oh, my coat. Oh, God. You sure you don't know anything about that envelope? No, no, I told you. And please, not a word to the wife. And uh, thanks for returning me overcoat and uh, everything. Any time you pass in Hampton Week, just drop in. No, no, no. On second thoughts, you better not. Uh, got me reputation to think of. Thank you. You certainly do wonders for a girl self confident, George. It's a gift. Uh, good night. Careful how you go. Well? Well, what? Uh, did you get it? No, I bloody didn't. And do you know why? Because he didn't fancy me. That's why. My first failure in all the years I've been at it. I meant the envelope. Stop the envelope! Oh, I'm sorry, boss. I'll just have to have another go tomorrow. Tomorrow? What's wrong with tonight? Because I've damn near knackered myself, that's why. Oh, charming. And I thought you cared for the welfare of your employees. Now listen to me, you incompetent idiot. I have a bloody good mind to join a union. Well, if he hasn't got it, who has? Pinch it. Oh, eight o'clock sharp. Tomorrow morning, hotel car park. Great. I'll have someone meet him. No, not you. Oh, and Gordon, uh, tell him it's more than a one-off job now. Yes, it'll be three altogether. Yeah. A couple staying here uh, at, in the hotel. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> morning, Marley. Uh, Mildred. Morning, George. I uh, just come to knock you up. Pardon? Uh, for breakfast. Oh, oh, that'll be nice. You sleep all right, do you? Oh, yeah, not too bad. You? Uh, oh, uh, mustn't complain. Oh. Last night. <laughs> Last night? Hmm. After you went upstairs to get your muffler. Oh, um, yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't find it. Uh, so, well, you know, I thought I'd have an early night. Without telling me? Uh, well, I, 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 I couldn't tell you. Why not? Well, well you, you weren't there at the lifts when I went back. Ah. Oh. What happened to you then? When? When you weren't there at the lifts when I went back. Uh, asleep. Sleep? Hmm. Yes, I thought I'd have an early night too. Oh. Yes. It's nice here, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes, very. Uh, you glad you came? Well, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
No, I'm not. You're not? Why not? Why did you suddenly change your mind? If, uh, on the other hand, maybe you're right. I am? If, yes, well, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm a bit disappointed in this place. I thought it was going to be nicer, somehow. Yeah, me too. Really? Yeah, I, I didn't like to tell you, you know, in case it spoilt your treat. Oh, George, that's very thoughtful of you. No, not at all. And I, I'll tell you something else. They don't do the bacon and eggs as good as you do. You're just saying that. No, I'm not honest. George. Yeah? Let's go home. When? Now. Right. Oh, George, you're oh, 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 come on, love. Oh, come on. Oh, Bonjour. Oh, Yeah, hello, And another thing, I do miss little truffles. Yeah. And I thought this place would be more exciting, you know, more fun. More things happening. I mean, how wrong can you be? <laughs> Home in time to see Tis was. Oh, bliss. I wonder what they're here for. Oh, perhaps someone's been stealing hotel property. The place is full of crooks. Really? Shot. Yeah. Oh, I tell you what, Mildred. Hmm? You settle up and I'll go and get the car. Uh, George. Yeah? I've got a better idea. Yeah, I know. I'll settle up and you go and get the car. Well done. I'll see you outside. Anybody at home? I want to settle the bill. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't hear you. Well, me and the wife were leaving two days earlier. Well, I can't blame you after what's happened. How did you know about that? Uh, telephone? I'll get your bill for you, sir. Hello. Perhaps they were leaving. Leaving? They can't be leaving. They're not dead. I thought you said they were here the whole weekend. They were. Oh, my God, it's always the same. If you want someone done properly, do him yourself. I'll meet you in the car park. That's him, Mr. Bridges. But Harry Pinto's hit man. That's the fellow he's hired to kill me. Well, don't underestimate him. He may look like a right nana. That's just part of an act. Underneath, it's pure steel. That's his car. Oh, that heap of junk. That's part of the act as well. Who's she? Well, he tries to make out she's his wife. More like an assistant, I reckon. A woman hit man? Oh, yes. It's the Equal Opportunities Act, isn't it? All right, Harvey, after him. Hold on. That's Harry Pinto's car. He must be escorting them. Bloody marvellous. It's time we get all of them all in one go. All right, move it, Harvey, move right. it. Part, George. What for? I always lose my way around Kensington. I don't need a map to get home from here. You need a map to get home from the bottom of our garden. Take the next on the left. Why? It's a shortcut. Oh, God. 
Manchester, here we come. Can I take the next on the right? George, are you sure you know what you're doing? Trust me, Mildred. No, I know you don't know what you're doing. Where the hell do you think they're going? God knows. I think they've spotted us. Now turn right. They're going back the way they came. Yeah, they must have tumbled us. Well, just make sure you don't lose them. Right. Where do I go now? Uh, 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 no, no, right. Oh, George! Uh, uh, straight ahead. Right. Admit it, we're lost. Well, of course we're not. We just don't know where we are. Oh, hey, look, there's Buckingham Palace. So we must be in Oxford Street. That is the Houses of Parliament. Oh, oh yeah. We got that on a tea towel. Right. Now, see if you can find it on the map. I don't need to. It's in our kitchen. George! Yeah, all right, all right. Keep your eye on the road. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, turn left now. What? Uh, over the bridge. Well, that's the way we came. Hey? Uh, no, no, it only looks like it. Your chance. Take him on the straight. All right, this is it. Pinto first, then the Morris. I don't recognize this bit. You should have turned left at the last roundabout. Now you tell me. Keep your eye on the road. Um, well, what are you waiting for? Go, Venom. Shy love. Go! They're making a break for it. Move it, Harvey. Exhaust. Mm. It will be a nice surprise for the foremast, won't it? Us coming home two days early. The way we're going, it's going to take three days. Well, unless you put your foot down, it's going to take us a week. Right. I said take the next on the left. You said right. Yeah, well, when I said right, I meant left, didn't I? Oh, what's the use? <laughs> 
Fish up! Got them. All of them. The only way out of here is in a hearse. That's odd. What? Those road hogs. They're still behind us. Anyone would think they were following us. Oh, don't be daft. Why should anyone want to follow us? Especially down a dead end like this. Dead end? It's not a dead end, George. Look! Those road hogs. Huh? I think they've had a little accident. Ah, oh, serves them right. The way they were driving, they could have hurt somebody. You know, you're going to move on. Oh, wait. Not ah. the oh. struggling, just ah. yes, the other car. Yes, yes. Oh. Get off! This is a funny sort of road, Mildred. No shops or houses. Anyone think we're north of Watford? What makes you think we're not? He's flying low. Air hog! You know what I think, George? What? I think we're going around in ever-decreasing circles and we're going to disappear up our own exhaust pipe. That's silly, Mildred. Convince me, George. I've made the coffee, Geoffrey. What are you doing out here? I was going to do the lawn later, but since Roper borrowed the mower, it's the blades are jammed with bits of garden gnome. And he cut through the cable. Oh, well, be fair. He did try his best to repair it. Rather funny, really. Funny? What's put you in such a good mood? 24 hours without Roper. Nobody to throw weeds in my garden. To burn mattresses while we're having a garden party. They'll be away for at least another... Oh, my God. Oh. Can't be. I think it is. No other car sounds quite like that. They must be coming home early. Roper's about. Run, kids, run! Tristram, what have you been doing in Mr. Roper's garden? Mainly Mr. Roper's concrete gnome. I want to surprise him. I think you'll succeed. Oh, dear. Oh, hello, Alan. Hello, Mr. Bormahan. We decided to come back early. We gathered. But it's so nice to be back home. Really? Mm. Home? Oh, and how's my darling little treasure? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. I mended your concrete gnome for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah, you did a great job. Everything all right? I mean, no problems? Oh, no, none. Apart from little piddles there. You mean truffles. I know what I mean. She chewed up one of Daddy's old slippers. I wouldn't have minded. My foot was still in it. Oh, dear. And she ate Daddy's steak, so we had to have pedigree chum and chips. That's a joke, Tristram. Honestly, Mildred, she was no trouble. How was the hotel? Oh, a bit dull. Nothing much happened. Yeah, it was a bit boring. Like a graveyard. Huh? Well, thank you for looking after truffles. Oh, don't mention it. We'll be off now. All right, Any time you go away, we'll be delighted. Couldn't have put it better myself. Of course, uh, was the odd moment in the hotel when it was quite a bit exciting? Yes, there was. Mildred, mm. if a person asked a person to um, do things, but they didn't, at the second person, that is, not, not the first, um, even though they didn't do things, they did consider it. I don't think that'd be wrong, would you? That's what I felt. But I didn't know you knew about it. Oh, yeah, I, I knew about it, but I didn't know that you knew about it. Well, of course. I must admit, Mildred, it did bring back memories. Distant memories, yes. There was a time when, you know, you and I, we used to do things. Almost every month. Uh, quite, yes. Mildred. Yes, George. Uh, well, I was 
was, I was uh, wondering if, if you, uh, you know, if you felt, um... Oh, yes! Right. Shall we go, then? Oh! I almost forgot. What? <laughs> Pickled onions. The romance of it all. You're ready! Oh, uh, yeah, coming, George. <laughs>